All right, hello there. Welcome to the next episode of Satisfactory. And right now we're just getting our aluminum set up and going. So we should make 180 aluminum ingots uh, per minute as they've just now started coming down, uh, giving it a total of 180 uh, aluminum scrap per minute. And then a total of 225. That doesn't make sense now, does it? Silica per minute. Um, huh, I think we're using more, more than 180. So here's our setup for the ingots. No, we're using 90. Okay, that's 270 per minute. Um, not 180. I forgot to add one in there. So we're using 270 aluminum scrap per minute. And as you know from last episode, we have much, 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 much more than that. But let's go ahead and update this to be correct. 70 per minute and i went ahead and belted that across our little sky bridge um over here so we can start using it and yeah everything is going pretty smoothly so now we have a aluminum aluminum ingots 180 per minute to be exact and now we need to work on our next thing which is uh belts and to get the mark 5 belts i know i'm skipping over, I'm skipping over hover pack just just for a second i'll come back to it but to get that we do need aluminum sheets which takes the ingots and unfortunately copper um because if we look at the sheets here there are no there's no alternate recipes so you have to use this recipe and so we're gonna have to import copper or find a copper node around here there doesn't have to be a copper node close by does there not looking like it's not even a little bit 623 meters is the closest one um what kind of node is this oh it's a pure node though okay um copper pure no infinite mark okay so we might just smelt it all and then belt it over lazily maybe probably oh yeah it's not that far it's right here and Here's this. Wait, this one is this copper, right? Iron. Why don't you go somewhere else, buddy? I don't care about you. All right. Which one of you losers is the copper? It's over here. Okay. So, yeah, our base is right there. I'm just going to smelt and belt, baby. Smelt and belt. Is that a water source right here? Oh, my God. All right, the copper has been smelted and it's been belted. Go we'll take a bird's eye view here. So we have a little belt coming over here uh, to our base. I'm just put belting in ingots uh, into the back over there instead of using the normal sky bridge um, that we use for everything else. And if we come over here, we're producing 600 copper ingots per minute with uh, this setup here using the pure setup. So I have these both underclocked to produce 160 water per minute because that's how much we need for the 16 refineries that are taking out of the pure node at 240 copper per minute. And that's just a giant manifold. Uh, that's all it is. It's stopped right now because um, we're not using the copper ingots just yet. So we've backed up on copper ingots. And yeah, I'm again 600 and then it gets belted over to the base. And then we go back to the base. Oh God, I know readjust that um oh yeah we're belting in over there and if we i really wish you could like slide off that that's a one thing of movement i wish i could do um if we come up to our logistics floor we can come over here and see that we can now pull copper into our base I'm also kind of thinking we haven't used this side of the base at all, so maybe. I mean, we, we have constructors down here. I think we'll leave the constructors down here, and then do I have anything up on this floor? Uh, we have our ugh, we have our manufacturers over here. Then I'm gonna go on the other side where we have all of our foundries. Actually, that makes sense to keep all our foundries together. So I'll go ahead and set up three foundries to make aluminum ingots because that's how much we can make with the belts we have. We just don't have the belt speed to transfer more than um, more than we need. Or more than we can. So we need to transfer more. I think it's probably aluminum scrap. 
to get more aluminum ingots. So now, right now we're only making 180 aluminum ingots. So we can only do three. Um, oh wait, we have the aluminum ingots. What are the copper for? Well, it doesn't go into a foundry. It goes into an assembler. So let's actually open up our assembler recipes here. And let's see what we can actually get out of this. So we want the uh, alkyd. We need 30 per minute. Which means we're making 180. So we can make six of these if we want. I think we'll use three because I'm pretty sure another recipe that we need for something. Aluminum casing. Oh, that's just a constructor. We need 90 per minute on that. So we can do 90 here and then 90 on the other one. So yeah, I think we do three and uh, one for the other one. And here's the logistics floor set up. We're just taking our ingots directly out of here and fuck, oh, dude, my elbow. So I keep pinching something on my elbow. It hurts. I don't know what's going on, but we'll put 90 this way. I have a splitter here because I'm going to split another 90 off for our next thing. But then we're also uh, injecting copper into there as well, if I can move. Um, yes, yeah, logistics floor is coming along. I thought I may give myself way too much room. Turns out it's good. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this is that we now have the casings. You guys have to power it up and start storing it. But other than that, we should be good. And here we go. Our factory is now up and running. We are producing 90 all clad aluminum sheets per minute which is very nice. And we're gonna have to go downstairs and actually start storing it or something. Um, where did I bring it out of? Here. So we're making 90 and then just for right now, um, I'm just gonna do a little dirty storage down here. A very, very dirty one. And are you serious? Are you serious right now? You're gonna do this to me in front of everyone? All right. Uh, that, and then we'll just we'll get a uh, dimensional depot also just store it in there for now uh, not sure if we need any in our personal inventory but now we have some so we need 200 of that and that's for the next logistics belt but I think we can actually start working on the I need to close this back up <laughs> we can actually start working on the alumina casings which I think is made in the assembler. It is not. Okay, is it made in a foundry? That's always the next one. It is, okay. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> Alumina casing? Oh, constructor. Okay. It's made in the constructor, which means it's gonna go downstairs. Um, well, let's make all our const like our simple constructors. Yeah, this isn't being used at all. So if we're making, let's just come down right here. Um, one eighty. We could we could belt off and just come this way if we were really pressed about it. We come this way, split off our aluminum. And then if we really pressed about it, probably just come this way. And then come over here. Yes, lots of uh, uh, cutting. Then we can come down here, place our constructor. Um, like right here doesn't really matter um and then just for now we'll just do it this way the casings you need a whole 90 per minute and you know what i'll just we'll just we're doing it live we'll come up here right there i don't know why i did that foundation to be honest um we'll come this way hook into here goes up a little bit I don't care and then we will also um let's see so we're making 180 here 90 here I'll just put a sign here that says 90 also uh actually I'll put it where it goes in that's just gonna help 
That's what she said. Um, okay. 90. Aluminum ingots. Select icon. Then we just take out this. We should be making 60 aluminum casing per minute, which is great. But we also have to come up like right. Oh, God. All right. We're making how much? 60? Kind of. Eh. But let's do this. Let's not do go too crazy now. I think we should come over here. Uh, you could probably do one less than that. Uh, come on. Where are you? Go. Here we go. And then I have to make a sign that says 60. 60. Aluminum casings. And then again, just for the quick and dirty, because I don't know what to do with it right now. We're just going to... These will all be gone at some point. I'll probably have like a main storage room where all the leftovers will go and then we'll start sinking stuff. But for right now, uh, this is fine because if these systems back up, it's not the end of the world. I have many fail safes in front of it to get rid of extra stuff so processes don't break down. <clears throat> so this should be this should be fine for now. Why must you Why must you be the way that you are? Okay. And then we should get, start pulling out aluminum casings. Very nice. And now we're good and we can see how much alumina. Hopefully I need to find out what makes um once we get the logistics mark five belt we can up how much um what do you call it aluminum we're making and then from there we can siphon more off this way so it'll all work just fine and damn yeah we made that stuff fast so we'll go ahead and put that in there and then we need some plates um how many plates do we have the answer is not enough we have to go over to our storage to get some oh also between episodes i added some more awesome sinks just because the belts they were they couldn't keep up um i think even with mark 5 it would have been a struggle because we're just producing so many items that were in excess or just not using it all yet so i added like one two three more awesome sinks and that seems to have fixed our issue for the most part some of it still kind of backed up a little bit but we've definitely cleared out a much bigger chunk than we would have and that's always good but with that we should have mark five belts boom milestone reached fix it dedicated this milestone to the conveyor belt and lift mark five they may be implying that your factory could be further optimized. While they are correct, I believe they are setting unreasonable expectations. Having all of humanity wow. very definitely relying on your work is a lot of pressure. It's a good thing I'm here. So I don't know if it's because of alternate recipes or whatever, just how I, or how I had it set up. But for me, like Mark Five belts are pretty cheap right now, <laughs> especially right now, especially with how much we're making. We filled up that 800 pretty quickly. Um, we're definitely making more more materials for Mark V belts right off the bat than we were Mark IV belts. Because Mark IV belts were expensive for us until like last episode. So now it's about to get quick. Oh. Just the speed. Just the raw speed. Look at it all go, and now we'll really start clearing out. I'm going to go ahead and replace all these belts with Mark V belts, and some of the other logistics belts as well, and I'll be able to make more aluminum, and oh yeah, it's just, it's all coming together. So our freighter just came back down, and I'm thinking, what's with the hover pack, huh? 
So the hover pack needs computers, motors, heavy modular frames, and more of those sheets. Um, we just happen to have all of it. Uh, I don't think I have computers and stuff being stored in the cloud, but we do have computers and heavy modular frames. So we'll go ahead and how much do I need? Boom, boom. We need another couple of those. I'll get all together, but we have it all. So I'm not worried. Yeah, we got a full double bin here full of computers. I just need to start um, uploading it to our personal dimension. Oh, I mean, it's too steep. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> like, what do you mean by that? I'll uh, we'll grab a hundred of those. And then I'll also put this stuff in our personal dimension because what if we need them? I'm also just now realizing I forgot to hook this thing back up because we weren't making enough steel beams. But now we are making more than enough and we don't even need them as much anymore. That's an oversight on my part. There we go. Now our 74 beams per minute have been belted on over. I also put four summer sloops in our uh, heavy modular frame machine just to get more of them because it's kind of a pain to make them compared to other things. So I'd rather not. <laughs> uh, so we need a hundred modular frame. We need how many motors we need? We need another 200. So all of these. Thank you. Go in your home. And then we need the computers and the heavy, heavy modular frames. Heavies we need. Go. And boom. Now we have a hover pack. Milestone reached. The hover pack draws energy from nearby power connections and so can only be used in their vicinity. It provides an excellent vantage point of your work, which you clearly need. Otherwise, you right. have optimized that obvious problem by now. What? I feel like it's good. <clears throat> All right. Um, hover pack time. I've never had one of these before, ever. So this is really cool. So it just hovers. And then since I'm by power sources, I saw it kind of charge me up. Oh yeah, this is nice. Oh, I've never had this before. It's so cool. How do I get down? How do I, how do I get down? Out. Oh, see, okay. Go down, there we go. That's awesome. So it looks like we have two <clears throat> milestones here and while we wait for the pod to return we can easily get a uh, control system development now and um, we have everything we need for it more than enough this one though we do need gas filters and we don't have gas filters we don't have gas masks which is right here and oh my god uh we need coal it's the fabric i've never we haven't made fabric at all all right, um, is fabric made in here? Is fabric made in here? So fabric is mycelia and biomass. I'm never going to use this stuff, but unfortunately, unfortunately, we need it. And here we go. Now we can research this. We don't want it, but you know, now we've got it. Research completed. Gas mask and oh my god. Unlocked. Mycelia fabric is highly absorbent, making it more effective at toxic gas filtration than the standard issue Pioneer helmet. A pleasant pine scent is included. Gas filters require regular replacement for optimal safety. Yeah, we're gonna need to find some way to get <laughs> a lot of fabric. Alright. I'm not gonna be. Bada bing. Bada boom. Research completed. Polyester fabric recipe unlocked. Using polyethylene tariff phthalate, production of a lightweight and strong fabric can be automated. It has many of the properties of naturally sourced fabric and also amplifies body odor. Interesting. All right, here's our automated fabric. We're just over at the box that I had set up right now. Um, that's where we're producing our oil. And so instead of trashing our polymer resin, we're now using our polymer resin to make fabric. 
And now we'll make 40 fabric a minute. How great is that? All right, now that we have fabric, <clears throat> we need gas filters. Not that I'm ever going to use them, but we need them for the next uh, milestone, I guess. <clears throat> so what do they need? They need an assembler. They need coal. They need iron plates. And they need fabric. So what am I going to do? I'm going to siphon off what we're making <laughs> um, from here. And I know this actually goes all the way to our other thing. We don't need anything else over here, so it might just make it over in our where, wherever this goes. Um, it's a turbo fuel setup, so why not make it more confusing and just I don't know, add our new filter setup over here. And look at that! Now we have coal over here. And since the filter is not something I really cared too much to automate, <clears throat> what we're gonna do here is we're going to do the old fashioned to come out and then we will uh, store it in a big container. Uh, that's a move. Getting messy down here, but I <laughs> do that. And then we need to reconnect you like it. Um, I messed up next to this and that are we making turbo fuel still oh got it all okay uh so there's that there's that there's hopefully everyone's online everyone's yellow no one's red so I think it's all good all good in the hood so what we're gonna do is now we're supplying it with coal then we just need iron plates and fabric. And I'm just going to... I don't care about automating it. We're just going to put storage containers here. And just put them on in. Why aren't you... I put... Dude, I'm going to put these the right way one of these days. One of these days. I'm going to get it right. Just watch. Okay. So now we should have gas filters more or less automated. I'll go ahead and back up some plates and then we'll grab some fabric and put some of that in there. And now we kind of have filters. And this is how I'll probably leave it for a while unless I find myself really needing a lot of them, which I don't think I will. Maybe when we make our nuclear setup, but that's about it. So while we wait on those... uh whatever is to get made we'll go ahead and do our next thing which just needs what can i put in here we we'll need another 140 of the aluminum which we should be pretty much set on all of it so two stacks of you and grab a couple of you because we're going to use it at some point um there you go and then you know thousand plastic and another 200 computers uh one, two, computers <laughs> much as we can store and then a thousand plastic huh we don't have a thousand plastic but we will soon enough because we make a lot of it also realizing that our system here to overflow is just it's not working we're making too much shit so we gotta do like an awesome sink per like depot at this point uh we're just, yeah we're just making way too much you know it's a great problem to have though and the reason I bring that up now is because our aluminum production is being hindered because we're not being able to avoid our quartz crystals fast enough because we're not really using them right now. And we need silica. And since it's a monorail system, it kind of switches back and forth between which crate has what in it. Um, so we really just need to get rid of a lot of this. Oh, the quartz specifically. All right, before I got off track, let's go ahead and input the rest of the plastic. We're short one plastic. That's impressive, honestly. There you go. And upload whatever we can into there. Oh, oh sorry. We'll launch that bad boy. And now we can make... Milestone reached. Several parts more efficient and powerful than the human brain can now be made to compensate for many deficiencies <laughs> otherwise encountered in future development efforts. The blender enables you to mix and or combine parts and fluids for more complex recipes. 
Most importantly, project part number six, the assembly director system, should be produced and delivered to the space elevator as soon as possible. Okay, well, if Ada's saying that, we might need to do it like now. Um, I need to put down and see what's, actually, we should have parts, right? Um, which one did she say? I think she meant this one, and it does look, <laughs> it looks rough. It's gonna take about seven years to make. I'm also going through it, and it looks like we need to change, we should probably change our modular frame, um, heavy modular frame setup. I think right now we're using the base one. So it's modular frames. It's still gonna be five modular frames to one, 20 steel pipes, five encased steel beams to one, and then 120 screws. But if we look at the other one, it, this one right here, it's gonna be, you know, the screws don't matter. We need 390 per minute. That kind of does matter in a sense. That kind of does matter actually. We can't make 390. Well, we can't make 390 very easily, but 35 rubber per minute is going to eat up a lot of rubber, which is fine. And then we have the encased beams, and I think uh, that would be all of our module. That would be all of our modular frames, to be honest. Um, not be too big of a problem though. All right, I've, we had switched everything over. We're not pulling in our rubber at 75 a minute. Then everything else just kind of stays the same. Um, a little bit of upgrade on how much actual case beams we need for making we made like 74 earlier sword or last episode i don't remember when it was uh but now we have more than enough of that and then this is later i think we're making 18 point like eight modular frames per minute over at the beginner base so that's later uh, just about everything we have so and then we have all the screws we'll need um i need to now we need to go ahead and we should be out of materials, select recipe, and I want this recipe. Yes. And then go ahead and put everything back in there that needs to go back in there because I don't want it. There you go. And now everything should be backed up again. Very nice. Now we're making 390 screws a minute and I know a lot of people don't like to have screws in their base, um, but it doesn't matter to me because we're just directly putting these steel beams into screws and it just the screws stay right here they don't go anywhere else so it's not really that big of a deal and it's like the best recipe i think for our setup at least um for these because it seems to be the cheapest out of all of them it makes them the fastest but it also makes i think it's the the cheapest option here compared to like all the materials you need like it's the cheapest amount of industrial beams you need it's uh hide for frames it's less screws actually and um this other recipe it's 20 which i mean it's you know the same as this so overall i think it's like the cheapest one and it's fastest so works for us and if we put our summer sloops in here now we get seven and a half per minute that's what i'm talking about look at all that quick wire it's all getting sank yeah, we definitely had a huge, huge, huge backlog we need to clear out of all of our factories. So we will be clearing all of this out for quite a while. Why are you moving so slow? Oh, so that didn't upgrade you to five. That would be why. There we go. Take on my part. But with all that said and done, I think it's time to cut this episode to a close. And we got a, quite a lot done. We finished. We finished one of the phases. We did not finish phase seven, which we can do right now, and we should. So we need some of that quick wire we were watching go away. And we need to do that. Give you that. Um, and then the, the aluminum casings. Give you that. And then whatever that stuff is called. Should have uploaded a little bit of it. Maybe or none of it? Question mark. I never dimensionally uploaded it. That's my fault. <laughs> um, we do have quite a few just relaxing over here. Go ahead and do that. But I'll go ahead and take 50 out for now because we need them. And here we go. Hazmat suit ready. 
And with that, phase or tier seven is complete. Milestone reached. The hazmat suit protects the wearer from radiation by consuming iodine infused filters. You may find this protection essential if you are going to finally get around to saving humanity. I previously gave you compliments in an attempt to inspire you, but it might have given you the wrong idea. I will definitely be totally honest with you from this moment on. Here is a demonstration of a truthful compliment. That suit looks like it was made for you. Because it was. Thanks. So, so much attitude. Uh, all right, but yeah, with that, I think completing tier seven is a good place to call it. And then next, probably between episodes, I'll probably, unless I do something crazy, I might. I'm probably gonna. I'm gonna do something crazy. We're gonna get an insane modular frame factory going up. There's just pure iron nodes and water right there, which means there's a room for a lot of modular frames. But yeah, uh, see you.